Welcome to Sporting Kelsa's football vlog and update um, for our youth players, youth coaches um, for the upcoming recommencement of football. So tonight on our on our vlog we have uh, Steve Clark. Uh, he's the head of coaching at Sporting Kelsa. So we can have a chat with him and he'll give us a bit more inf information about what's been going on behind the scenes um since lockdown uh in november uh what's changed uh what football will look like for for your child and uh how we're looking forward to seeing you all back hi steve hi craig thanks for inviting me on uh it's uh, i'm looking forward to it yeah that's great um so just give us a a little bit of a, a details on your background and um and what you've been doing uh, at calcer since you came in um my background, um, I worked for the FA for 16 years as a coach educator. Um, I'm an ex-teacher, worked in uh, FE education for about 15 years. I've been at Walsall College for 10 of those. Um, also run my own business in coaching, uh, developing relationships with Youth Justice, Violence Reduction Unit, uh and kind of people who are making wrong choices if you like uh so we kind of educate them through sport and hopefully put some training back into them so they can uh, stay safe and, and have a better pathway than what they're choosing at the minute so that's pretty much me uh what i've been doing in, uh at calsa for the last few months it's been difficult craig to be fair um times are different times are hard uh it's not the same as it used to be we're, we're, we're obviously in the second or third lockdown or interference if you like of, of training and uh, football so it's been difficult uh, I think the most important thing for me though is the fact that I'm very much about a people's person so I want to build up relationships with people first so the first couple of months was pretty much me coming down Calsa, meeting the coaches, building that relationship up, getting to know individuals and, and what they're about, really. I think that's the most important thing in my role as head of coaching is understand the people first uh, and then try and have an impact into that and make them feel part of it. So that has been uh, pretty much really main focus is getting to know people. Uh, and then obviously, along with people very important are the, are the coaches and the players as their roles and what they do so we've held several coaches meetings where we've kind of spoken about what our plans are uh, we've spoke with the players from each individual age group and spoke with the players and told them about what we're trying to do and basically we're just trying to say we're trying to improve them as footballers and improve the coaches as, as coaches and it, uh, enhance their knowledge and then we've also engaged the parents and I think that's really important then because we've kind of got everybody singing from the same sheet, uh, you know, and kind of having the same ideas. Um, we've made no really bounds about it that we want excellence throughout the football club. Uh, and our job is to bridge the gap between youth and senior football, um, because in my opinion, uh, the players need to be supplementing that first team, whatever that first team might be, could be. Uh, step five as they're in at the minute hopefully in a couple of years time the plan is that the team get to possibly step three in a three to five year project so if the first team are going to progress then obviously the academy and the players have got to progress along with it to supplement the first team because that's the uh, ultimate aim having spoken with the first team manager and I know a lot of the first team coaching staff down at Calsa because I've been at the club for this is my third year now but not in this role, only six months in this role. Uh, I kind of know a lot about how the club ticks off the field. So I think it's really important to engage the people that are, you know, key stakeholders, which is definitely the parents, the coaches and the players and the staff. So that was uh, that was pretty much my uh, six month aim, really, to get to know people. That's great. That's great. And what would you uh, assess the uh, potential of the youth section from what you've seen? Um, I think it's a bit like a sleeping giant, Craig, to be fair. I think there's a lot of uh, lot of work to be done, don't get me wrong. But I think having met with the people now and had several uh, discussions with them, obviously it's not the same. We've been doing a lot of it via Zoom, a lot of it um, in a different format than how we would normally do it. However, that's just as a coach, you've got to adapt. And that's the situation we find ourselves in. So 
I would say it's the future's looking really bright. It's an up and coming club. Uh, it feels right. It's got a nice feel about the club at the minute. It's a very family orientated club and it's got a nice feel. And I think if it, if a club, you can tell straight away, you know, I've only played for a handful of clubs in my kind of glittering career, if you like, where I've really felt that a couple of clubs that, that you know, they've really felt nice and at homely and, and Calsa really feels like that. Seems seems really a good vibe about it at the moment. That's great. That's great. So in that in that six months, you, you talked earlier on about um, what you've you've done and implemented to try and get um, uh, excellence through the club. So what what if I'm a new coach coming to the club? What what would I expect? What would be the requirements? And you know what kind of things have you put in place to develop me as a coach and, and the player players as well? What have you done to put in to put, develop those players? I think the uh, the first thing that I've kind of implemented, which which really builds on that relationship bit that I spoke about earlier on, is is kind of uh, implement a coach's development plan. Uh, what that coach's development plan is is just really a, a capture a picture of the coach and their journey and where they want to go and where they see themselves at the minute. So the uh, development plan is all about how I can support them in that coaching journey. So if I know what where they want to go, what kind of their aspirations are, if you like. I can kind of support them in that journey. So I think it's it was really important at the very beginning to kind of capture that information. Two or three would be very similar. Um, some will want to do different qualifications, but one or two have, have surprised me. Uh, they want more knowledge on sports science, more knowledge on analysis of performance. So that's really good, and that gives me a real kind of uh, good feeling that I can kind of support them with with kind of the people that I kind of can network with as well because if I don't know the answers I'll certainly get experts in to, to kind of bridge that gap and we can we can uh, get those experts in to come and talk to the coaches about what their needs are. Um, a lot of it we'll be able to sort out ourselves because um, some of it will just be building confidence up, getting qualifications in place, um, me supporting them in that journey do a bit of uh, coach mentoring. I think that's really important that we do a bit of peer observations and, and and do a bit of mentoring. So that will all come in the future. But that plan really has, has kind of like started the ball rolling, if you like, because now the coaches have got a buy-in and I can see where the, the light is at the end of the tunnel and I can make it happen for them, really. That's great. That's great. So it's not just about the player itself. There's there's a plan for every coach and, and every member of staff that, you know, to try and get them to achieve what they want as well as the player, which is great. Um, yeah. with, with that in mind, obviously, uh, coaches and players, we're going through a, a, a training journey over the season. And what have you implemented to try and balance that out and, and to, to provide, um, to provide a, you know, a broader a spectrum of work um, throughout the club? I think one of the most important things is that, that the players are really key to it. Uh, and, and I think it's really important that the coaches understand how important the players are um, and how they can have an impact into their own learning. Um, I'm a big believer if, if you involve somebody in the process, they're, they're more likely to buy into it and, and do very well at it and rather than just be told what to do. So we've kind of um, had an individual development plan for each player at the club. So every single footballer at the club has got their own personal um, individual development plan. And that really highlights their strengths as a footballer and their areas for development. So if the players uh, understand their areas for development and then are, are watching videos to improve it, researching, looking at coaching sessions, uh, talking about it to the coaches, then what the idea behind that is that then is that for 15 or 20 minutes of any coaching session, they should do some self-teaching. So if it's uh, 1v1 defending that they might be struggling with, then they'll have 20 minutes allocated time within their coaching session where they can do their own development. And I think that's really important because on a on a pitch on a Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, whenever they play, then they have to make the decision. So therefore they, they can be involved in that process. So I think that's really key. Um, and to get the players on board, we've had discussions with all the players, the managers and, and, and the coaches, how we're going to implement it. Uh, and even down to the extent, I'm a big believer in this, um, one of the coaches, Aaron, the under nines coach, actually, I set him a project, a little pilot scheme to kind of feed back to all the other coaches on his experience of how he implemented that process and kind of the 
strengths and weaknesses of how he found it and how it worked. And then he fed back to the other coaches. So it isn't all about me. It's about all of us together kind of having that relationship where we all can learn off each other, really. And that seemed to really work, that uh, that feedback from Aaron. It was it was really good for the other coaches to see that, well, you know what, if Aaron's done it, I can give it a go. So I think that's really important as well, Craig, to be fair. That's great. Um, and if I was a new player to the club, uh, I'm coming in um, and I've got my first training session, what process or what 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 plan is in, in place for, for that? for that session what what kind of um journey is it that from from um arrival to to, to the end what kind of um structure is in in place in the session i spent a lot of time thinking about that when i first came to the club um and i thought well let's just have a look first let me see what's going on so i watched quite a few sessions from the, the off the field and looked at what everybody was doing and there wasn't any kind of plan. There wasn't any kind of direction. And it, each team seemed to be doing their own thing, whatever that own thing might be and look like. Um, so I thought it would be really important if we kind of frame the sessions to be all the same. So a lot of uh, youth football uh, can develop and change very quickly, depending on the growth rates of the of the children at that particular time. So one of the things I wanted to put in there was some athletic development into the session, um, because I don't think people were looking at children's movements enough and, and how they can develop at different times. And therefore, if the coaches didn't know that, then how were we going to help the, the players get over that, you know, long term player development kind of situation and the physical differences that might be within any age group? So we had a, an expert come down, Keith Burnett, and did a, a CPD session for us again. So, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to get an expert in to talk to other people rather than me pretending I'm the expert in everything. So we got this guy down and he put on some great sessions with the, with the, with the guys down at the academy and the coaches watched and took notes. We've got a Google Drive now where all his CPD was uploaded up there and, and all the coaches have got access to, the, to Keith's presentation, if you like. Um, and can look at the athletic development. So the big thing that I kind of changed straight away was the the athletic development. So pretty much a session would look like uh, most people's sessions used to look like a warm up, a uh, bit of a skill session, then a game. So we've changed it slightly now. So we do a warm up, we do individual development plan where the players plan their own sessions and deliver and discover their own learning. Then we do some athletic development, which is going to help with their movement and physical development and fundamentals. Um, and then we kind of moved on to the linking technique to skill. So one opposed to opposed sessions. Um, and then, you know, the small sided games to finish it off where we, where we kind of stay with the same topic. One of the big moves that we've done now just recently is we've got a syllabus. So we've got a 16 week syllabus. So we're all coaching the same topic at the same time, at the same night. That'll look different, obviously, from under sevens that it would do to under 19s, but it's the same topic and the same session. So therefore, those are the biggest uh, changes that have happened at the club so far. Uh, and I think when we get back on the grass, they'll be fully implemented and the coaches have been working really hard in the last few weeks to make sure that this syllabus will be delivered to the, you know, the, the situation that they might find themselves in on Wednesday when we get back. That's great. That's great. So when we when we do get back, uh, first session back, uh, team player, existing team player, um, uh, we've had three months off. What will that look like? Are we doing something different on that first night to to try and you know get everyone back in, or is it just going to run the, the syllabus straight off? No, I, you know it's been that long, Craig, that they've been off. That I think it's really important that the the kids just get back um, and just have a bit of fun. So. What I think we would be really good if we could get this going is that the first session when we get back is just let's have a, a tournament and, and and let's just have some fun and have some music blasting around the ground and the kids just can play and enjoy themselves, meet the friends and just get back to feeling good again. Because I think, that, you know, we've all suffered, you know, mental health and well-being. So I think it's really important that the kids come back and just have some fun in those that, that first couple of sessions, maybe even two weeks. Who knows where they can just come and, you know, there's no pressure on them. Just turn up and have a bit of fun with the mates. That's that's really important. So I think that's how we'll, we'll, we might even do two weeks before we start the syllabus and just get them back, you know, in, enjoying football again. Is that like the academy power play where they play nine minutes and three yeah. minutes? Yeah, 
etc. Yeah. So it's a bit of fun, bit of bit of uh, challenges, bit of SSJ. Yeah. Get, get that camaraderie again going. Yeah, just have a bit, have a bit of fun, Craig. You know, it's been missing for so long in most people's lives. You know, even our own as coaches, we love getting out there because that's our passion and that's what we like doing. So I think for the kids, yeah, definitely. I, you know, I, I could see it with the music, a bit of power play, with maybe a air horn, just starting and finishing each game, like just you know, just something that the kids can think this is different. I'm really enjoying this, and hopefully the parents will enjoy it as well. Watching, that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, Obviously, we're looking now, season 21-22, already plans in, in place. Um, what what teams are we looking to add? add? Um, I, know, I know there's there's some um, growth in the younger age groups. Is there anything coming on quite exciting in, in the older age groups as well? I think the biggest uh, kind of observation from me when I came to the to Calcer was the fact that the, the older age group, if you like, was missing. And, and if we're thinking about bridging the gap between youth and senior, we've got to bridge that gap straight away. Uh, there wasn't an under 19s, there isn't an under 21s, there isn't an 18s and there isn't a 16s. So we're really struggling at the top end. And those people are going to be the first ones that are going to impact into that first team's journey. If, they, if they're good enough and we can get the coaching right and we can get the academy set up right, then these players coming from... 14, 15, 16 are going to be quite crucial and key uh, for the first team. So we're going to uh, enter from next year an under-19 uh, floodlit league team in the MJPL, which would be really good. I think we've got trials that are going to be on the 16th of April. Um, so, you know, you can look at us and follow us on Twitter uh, and, and look for those dates. But the trials are open dates. We've had several talks. Uh, we've got expression of interest forms that people can just fill out and complete their their data so we, we can capture the data and let them know about anything else that's going on so the under 19s will be the first one um the under 18s possibly or maybe even 16s because if we've got 16 to 19 you know we've we've got a lot of room there so possibly 16s will be the next step after that you know we'd love to have every age group but i think it's realistically we, we you know if we're going two-year age groups then we can get a bit of a, a gap filled straight away uh, so the under 19s are going to be crucial to that, really, because uh, you know th th they could sit on the bench for the first team, or that's the plan, or you know break into the first team. If you're old enough, you're good enough, and and, and that's where we need to. Or if you're good enough, you're old enough, whichever way you want to look at it. So that's the first thing. Plug those gaps, and then obviously under sevens and under eights. You know we, we're starting a, a new team up uh, when we get back, uh, and that will be the the blood of the club linking in from the community side of the coaching. Let's say that in, in, in uh, youth development um, for um, early years, any changes like within an academy can take up to 10 years, can't it, for the, for the true come through for the true true, true development of 10 years within a programme. And, yeah. you know, those sevens and under eights, you've put those changes in now within the programme. Um, that those are the ones that are going to get the full benefit of that full pathway, aren't they? And you know, it'd be great to see those coming through in ten years' time, playing for the first team. You know, six, seven of them. You know, hopefully at step three, if we we get there within that time, maybe even step two, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. If no, I think I think you're right. I think it, you know, it does take time, and and people need to. Think about that, you know, the measure of success. What is it? How many people? What have we got? I think we we kind of beat ourselves up with data, you know, in every in every industry that you talk about. Coaching is probably not much different. But I think you're right. I think we need to walk before we run and just take things step by step and just implement the changes. And, and hopefully, you know, the coaches will probably agree and the, the players will just probably notice subtle differences. You know, my job is to support them in that journey. And and the journey could be a you know several years. It, it's not going to happen overnight. So I think you're right. Yeah, good good ten year project really, in front of us. And and for anyone that that's thinking about sporting Calsa and 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 how that could assist and help out, um, I know we've added some uh, key um, roles recently. Apart from adding the uh, four coaches that have been brought in to supplement our. Uh, uh, our club we've added some specialist roles haven't we and is there any others that we're looking at uh, or any other support that we need and require to to push us forward in the youth section 
Yeah, I think I think you're right. We have, we have spent a lot of time interviewing over the last few weeks um, to get the right people in who believe in what we do and think about the club's philosophy and believe in our our kind of uh, outlook on coaching as well. And it's been quite it's been quite interesting took a long time to do, obviously, but people in place with some real good up and young coming coaches with some good real prospects in front of them one of the ones that i was quite key to get on board really is analysis 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 of performance not easy for me to say is it analysis of performance uh coach to come in because i i think it's really important that we get the data to back up why we're doing things so you know why are we doing what we're doing how we're doing it why we're doing this it's not just me saying this is what we need to do it's a you know, the stats say we should be doing it because we're more likely to get more um, possession from doing what we're doing or, we, we, you know, we can counter-attack more quickly or open goal-scoring opportunities up because the data says this is what we're doing and that will link into our coaching sessions. So, therefore, it's a really important role, I think, for, for us to to get in place and, and, and we're fortunately, we've filled that one. Um, one of the other ones is a sports psychologist and that, that again, is something that the club... Um, to my to my knowledge have, have never had before so those are key roles because they can they can kind of supplement my beliefs and an outlook on coaching and kind of sell that to the to the rest of the coaches and the players because they'll have a different way of working because it's specialist and it's different um we're always on the lookout for uh, you know any coaches community coaches whether that's coming for the community session because as well as the teams, Craig, you know that we do community coaching sessions for just anybody who wants to just come and rock up at Calsa and just have a an hour's training. Um, you know, they can just come and train on, on, on the uh in the cages on the on the uh AstroTurf. And then if we if you get more serious and you want to go into teams, there's pathways into teams. And again, what's really important about Calsa is if you just want to rock up and, and do the community, great. If you want to go and play Midland Junior Premier League, we've got an elite pathway. If you just want to play Sunday football, there's that pathway as well, because I think it's about just developing the club and the family ethos that the club have got and keeping that legacy going, really. Yeah, um, I think that's great. I mean, with the community side of things, you know, I've been at the club myself for three years on the coaching side, and it's ever so, so good seeing the young ones come in, um, training on the Astro outside, uh, and then, and then you see them next. They're, they're with a the team in a, in the stadium under the lights on a on a Wednesday night training. Is you know filling that that stadium up with with people from the community, players, young players, and parents is absolutely fantastic. Seeing them using you know the community pitch, what it should be used for, community football, yeah. it's absolutely fantastic. Um, from uh, so based on that, is there any trials going on for the for for any players? Um, We've we've obviously got an education package that we're looking at as well. Um, so we have a link with Walsall College, um, Sporting Calsa, and we're trying to develop the education, which is 16 to 19, uh, where they can come and train and play and study at uh, Sporting Calsa. So there's some trials that we're hoping to get up and running to fill that gap on the 9th of April, where we've got uh, eight teams, I think it is, having an under-16 tournament, 11-a-side under-16 tournament. And hopefully some of those uh, guys that turn up on that might think about, you know, what well, it might be time now to think about what I'm doing with my life. Do I want to play sport and get an education as well? Um, because that programme is very successful. Uh, there's about 120 already on the sports courses anyway at Walsall College. And we want to try, kind of develop a boys' team and a girls' team uh, to come through the Sporting Calsa pathway, because that then will give us uh, eyes on, uh, really, of the latest talent coming through from the college. So it'd be really um, good if the if the college uh, education program kicked off, and then you know it'll only supplement our under nineteen flood league as well with the better players. Uh, so that that's coming up, and uh, we've got those trial dates already booked in for the and the tournament booked in so yeah the education program will be really good for boys and for girls so uh, we've got three boys teams already in the college and one female team but we'd like to develop that further and add another two to it really that'd be great so the the the, the, the tournaments on the ninth and the trials on the 16th yeah yeah so uh, literally if you're if your team's not in the tournament you can just 
you know, fill in an expression of interest for the for the trial, and then you just come down and you just um, you just get a day underneath the uh, in the stadium, just training and playing and 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 talking to people about the potential and opportunities we've got at the club. Yeah. No, perfect. Just just roll up and enjoy yourself. Have a good day. Have some fun at the same time. You know, you might explore your future career aspirations at the same time. Walsall College will be down there um, to talk about, you know, the uh, education and the academic side. And we'll obviously be down there to talk about the the football and the training and 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 how we can, you know, help them and support them in their journey as a, as a young player. Super, super. So it's our 30th anniversary this year, set up in 1991. Um, started off as a, a grassroots Sunday team, adult Sunday team. It's come quite far since then. Um, so what are we doing to look to uh, celebrate that um, this year? Um, I think, first of all, you've got to kind of congratulate the people who have kind of set Sporting Cars up in the first place. It's been magnificent and it's been, you know, 30 years is not a long time to get to step five football. Uh, you know, anybody will tell you if you if you started any football team up, that's a very short period of time. So well done for those guys for getting the 30 years under the belt. Um, what we're hoping to do is get a two day tournament down at the club where we can kind of again expose the club to, you know, the local community and, and people can come and play on the state of the art 4G Astro uh, in a 3000 capacity seater stadium. So uh, I think that'd be really good. I mean, it, you know, if anybody hasn't been to Calsa, it's probably one of the best around in the Midlands now um, and, it, and it's exciting times times ahead you know 30 years is is not very long in terms of a football team and the, the you know the guys that are in charge of it and, and involved in running it and obviously myself included have got aspirations to get the club up the pyramid and, and kind of you know as high as we can possibly go um, sometimes that happens quickly sometimes it takes a bit longer you know it just depends how the uh, you know, the last few years we've been ravaged by COVID. Um, you know, the first team we've been sitting top of the league for the last three years and haven't been promoted for whatever reason. Um, so I it's think, difficult. Yeah, I think the, fir- the first year they just got pipped, didn't they? I think, was it Warsaw Wood that just pipped them or was it yeah, someone else? I, th- I, think, I think if you think about the likes of Hereford have been in there, who are obviously yeah. a prolific non league side, Ilkeston. Um, Walsall Wood, you know, at one stage, you know, it's it's very difficult. I think Step 5 is probably the hardest league to get out of, having watched a lot of Step 5 uh, and Step 4. Step 4 is seems to me easier. There's a bit more football played, and whereas yeah. Step 5, anybody can beat anybody, and it's really tough. And, you you know, there's some big sides in there. Bromsgrove Sporting, I know, were, were really big. And so Calcer have, you know, been up there battling with everybody and I, and I just hope this year would have been the year that you know yeah. would have si- finally sealed off their promotion but you know go again and that, that'll be better for this experience and come back stronger anyway I think. I will, I will. Um, so I'm, I'm not a coach at the club um, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm not a coach at all but why can I support if I'm looking to support um, children uh, within the youth section on, on what other roles uh, do, the, do the club really need to, to to help them out and to, to help uh, support those teams that are playing? I think um, rather than me just kind of say what I think, I think it was, it was if I just go back to uh, when we had a parents' engagement uh, evening, um, some of the parents, you know, loved what we were talking about and then we kind of threw it to the floor and said, well, how could you help? And I know quite a few parents said, well, I can just do the coffees and the teas if you want i could do this i could do that I, you know my business is marketing i could help with marketing my business is banking i could help with treasury so i think what we've got to do is, is see who's available within the club and and what kind of skill set we've got from the parents because people will be doing this for a living um and i think it's important that we use key people that are already in the castle family and keep that family link going so definitely admin, um, treasurer, subcommittee. I'm, I'm really keen on getting a subcommittee up and running, which sits underneath the football committee and kind of like drives that forward. You know, um, parent spoke person. I, I would love every team to have a, a parent spoke person so we can get the information from the horse's mouth straight away before anything becomes a problem. Um, child welfare officer. 
So the, the you know treasurer, the, the secretaries. We've got um, Warsaw Junior Youth League. We've got the MJPL. We've got the under 19s. Hopefully, we can have the under 21s in a couple of a couple of seasons. And and that can't be just run by the same people at the club. We need you know people who can say I can help with that. Sponsorship, obviously, Craig is the is the big. Um, the big sponsorship we're looking currently for the under 19s for a sponsor. If there's anybody out there at the minute that's remotely interested, whatever that might be, training kit, match day kit, uh, corporate sponsorship, whatever it might be, we're we're always open and and listening to people who who, who are interested in that because it's difficult in these times for people to say, well, you know what, I've got some spare cash now, I could just put it to the football club. But I think it's important that we think of the wider community at Calsa and 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 where our plans are. You know mental health and well-being we've got judo clubs down at there we've got other organizations using the facilities it, it's not just a football club it's for the community and i think that's really important for a sponsor to kind of think about that and and how they could impact that in our journey i mean i mean if they're sponsoring that that kit and that that kit looks um good for the the under 19s it's 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 a cost that we can you know put towards other other avenues of keeping kids off the street and, and developing um, networking with you know with with um, organisations to support uh, teenagers and, and and reduce crime and things like that. So you know anything that we can get to, from businesses to help support that that's fantastic. Um, yeah. And and I, I think it's we're also looking for sponsors for the under sevens and eights. You know, um, so I think that'd be. I think it's really important if you can, if you can support your community, um, you know, that sponsorship is vital to help us uh, carry on the the other work that we want to do and, and push towards. Um, so have you enjoyed this tonight, Steve? No, I'm enjoying it, Craig. I mean, it, it is my passion anyway. You know, I love it. You love it. We all love it. That's why we're in it. Uh, grassroots football is, is for me where the, the heartbeat of the, the local community should be, to be fair. Um, so I've really enjoyed it and, and, and thanks for asking me and, and hopefully we can get several of these done, done with other people uh, and get a, yeah. a big picture of what the club's about and, and, and where we're going to sit soon with, within the community because I think that's important. People know that this is on their doorstep, really. Yeah, I think I yeah. think within Willing Hall there's a, there's a lot of work going in on that noose lane that um, you know people don't get to hear about, the club just goes away. And, and works, uh, you know, carries on its work, but it doesn't always get heard. And I, I think it's really important that we get, you know, our voice out there a little bit, um, you know, show what we're doing within the community. I think it's fantastic. And thank you for joining me tonight. You know, hopefully we can do uh, do another one in in a few months, and and maybe with uh, maybe with some of the other uh, members of uh, staff uh, within the youth section, and 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 maybe even the first team, uh, and just see where we go. Thank you very much for joining us, Brilliant. Steve. Brilliant. Enjoyed evening. it, Craig. Thank, thanks for your time.